Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Minute Man video. Today, I wanted to do something that was a little bit different than what I normally do on this channel, which so far has been just shooting semi-automatic rifles at targets the whole entire time. And today, I wanted to bring out a couple pieces of my collection, three to be specific, um, that are war horses, I would consider. These are all uh, sort of World War II era rifles, all bolt action rifles, and I wanted to talk a little bit about these uh, instruments um, and just give a, a rundown of them. So, first off, closest to the camera is this. Uh, this is a, an Arasaka of uh, Japanese origin. Um, there is no date marking on this rifle. Um, I'll actually come around and show you uh, the rifle a little bit closer. Uh, there is no date marking. Uh, there is some characters here. Um, there's some uh, serial numbers, proof marks on the back, but it's a very basic plain rifle. There's not a whole lot uh, to it. And um, in terms of this, uh, it shoots the 7.7 Japanese cartridge, which uh, is extremely expensive. Um, this ammunition uh, is some of the most expensive ammunition. Uh, and there it is right there, 7.7. These are um, soft point rounds by Steinle Ammunition. Very, very expensive ammo. Uh, it's almost $5 a round, somewhere around there, $4, $5 a round. So it's very expensive, so I'm not going to be shooting this a ton, but very, very nice rifle. Um, have the dust cover on it as well. Uh, with no date markings, it's kind of hard to prove whenever this was made, but it is at least earlier war. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but because it does have the airplane sights, um, which are folding airplane sights on the front of the rifle for shooting at moving aircraft, this would be a fairly early war example, possibly even pre-war example, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but that's that, very beautiful rifle. Next up is a classic, everyone probably has these. This is the Mosin Nagant M9130 rifle. This particular one uh, is from 1928. It is from Russia. It is all matching. And it has a hexagonal receiver. So some of these receivers, especially as the war drug on, uh, you'll see them as just round receivers. Uh, they'll be very similar to uh, this rifle, which we'll talk about next. It'll be very similar to that, just rounded. This uh, has hexagonal, so there's kind of a hexagonal uh, piece on it. Obviously, a little bit harder to machine and was something that was more or less stopped uh, as the war progressed on. Um, but this is a pretty nice arsenal refinish. Um, pretty sweet rifle uh, as well. It's chambered in the 5.45 by 54R, R standing for rimmed. So it is a rimmed cartridge. I will show you a comparison real quick. Right here is the 7.7 Jap. Uh, right here is the uh, 54R. As you can see, there's a significant rim to the bottom of the case as compared uh, to the actual uh, to the 7.7. Um, and this is uh, some surplus ammunition. This is actually armor piercing, so I'm not sure if we'll shoot. Uh, we probably won't shoot the metal plates down there uh, because this will probably go straight through. And finally, our last piece that I brought out today is this. This is a Turkish Mauser. Um, so it's an 8mm Mauser. Uh, it's Turkish. So pretty similar to the German Car 98K, which is sort of ubiquitous and iconic. Um, this is from 1945, from Turkey. So we're going to shoot all of these today. And I'll give you guys my thoughts, my opinions on them. And we'll go from there. Okay, so we are going to start out with the Arasaka um, because in my opinion, this is one of my more favorite designed rifles um, out of the three that I brought out today. Um, so it's pretty sweet. This actually cocks on close. So hopefully you can see this here. 
Um, so right here, you actually have to push down and to the right at the same time uh, because it actually cocks while you're doing that. Uh, so let's load this up, send these down range. These are soft points, so we're gonna shoot the metal targets. Um, well, one of the metal targets is rated for these big boy calibers, so pretty easy to load. I'm only putting in four because these are about $4 a round. So we'll go ahead and send it. The trigger on this thing is pretty bad. So just be aware of that. Missed the first one. I hit that one. Got that one too. The extractor is a little uh, worn on this, so it's not really extracting very well. Uh, let's go ahead and put it through this hole, shall we? Sweet rifle, let's go on to the next one. Next rifle that we have, the M9130. Most in the gun rifle, this is ubiquitous with gun ownership in America, really. Uh, these things were dirt cheap for a very long time. They're still, well, they're not really that cheap anymore, but this was very cheap whenever I got it. Arsenal refinish, 1928 action. Um, like I said, uh, this thing also has a very sticky bolt. Um, these things are uh, pretty ubiquitous with having uh, relatively sticky controls. Uh, and this one is no different. I also haven't really loaded one of these in a while, so it's a little weird. Um, as, a pair, as opposed to the Mauser Action, uh, this loads pretty much right on top of each other. It's a five-round um, internal magazine. Uh, whereas the Arasaka sort of loads side by side, and so does the Mauser, really. They load sort of almost like double stack in an AR mag. So let's go ahead and send this down range, shall we? There we go. Nice and sticky. Haven't shot this thing in forever. And uh imagine it's going to probably kick pretty hard. Got that. A little sticky there. I think I missed. This is not armor piercing ammunition, by the way. This is just normal Milserp ammo. Uh, so I am shooting a seal target that's rated for it. So should be all right. Really teaches you to really slap your rifle around. It's great for that. It's great for learning to slap your gun around. You know, this is a tool, right? Truly a tool, not necessarily a collector's piece, right? It's not a finish, it's Russian. So you really gotta teach it what you mean, really. Two for four, I think, there. So all in all, actually, with this lower pressure uh, surplus ammo, the bolt actually functioned relatively well uh, compared to how it normally functions with, like, Tula ammo or anything like that. So let's move on to the next one, shall we? The next one is the Turkish Mauser. This is essentially the same thing as a Car 98K, um, just in the sheer fact that it's a Mauser action, an 8mm Mauser, just this thing this thing is honestly pretty sweet uh it is dated 1945 it's not um obviously not a car 98k but it doesn't demand a very high price uh so i have some uh surplus ammunition that was literally in a bandolier you notice this is in a stripper clip and my other ammo wasn't um as far as i know including 
newer ammunition, newer produced ammunition from like PPU, they still ship this ammo already pre-inserted into a stripper clip. So that's really, really cool about these guns is that they come with stripper clips. I do have stripper clips for my other two guns, but they're pretty easy to lose. So I don't really know where they're at, but we're just gonna go ahead and uh, slide these down in here. Maybe. Come on, baby. So you can actually uh, just close the bolt and it'll go out. Uh, the stripper clip will eject itself, but I wanted to show you guys how the rounds stack in here as compared to the Mosin. So as you can see, they're sort of um, stacked, sort of double stacked almost uh, in there, which is super cool. So we're going to go ahead and shoot five just because that was all that was in the stripper clip. We're going to go ahead and blast that little target down there. See what we can do. I also really like the bolt lever on this. Put the safety on. The bolt lever on this is uh, bent. Wow. So I'm actually kind of pissed off. As soon as I started shooting the old Mauser here, um, my camera got too hot and uh, shut down. So unfortunately, unfortunately, I only brought out five rounds of ammo. So obviously, unfortunately, you didn't get to see me shoot the Mauser. Um, kind of sucks, but we got pretty decent hits all over this target. Thankfully, it doesn't look like anything was armor piercing, um, which I was slightly concerned about, but that's the target. I'm really sorry you guys didn't actually get to see this beast shot, but uh, there's that. 